Yeah, so friends, we are uh, continuing in this uh, sermon series, this conversation uh, around the gospel of Mark and, um, and trying to take a, a little bit of time to just sort of stroll through this short gospel. And today, it's a very familiar story, I think, that uh, many of us, even if you're not totally familiar with the Bible, you're probably familiar with some version of the story of Jesus' disciples being out in the boat and a storm coming up and, and Jesus calming the storm. And so to kind of help us with a fresh angle on this story, I want to begin uh, by looking at Psalm 124 and kind of working our way through this. We'll get back to Mark chapter 4, I promise, right? So let's begin here with Psalm 124. I know we just read this, but I want to show you again verses 1 and 2. The framing is repeated. All right. If the Lord had not been on our side, let Israel say, if the Lord had not been on our side when people attacked us. Now, Psalm 124 is ascribed to King David, and so it's likely that he is writing about either the time uh, before he was king, when he was kind of on the run from King Saul, maybe the time while he was king, which was really marked by his infidelity and uh, some really poor decisions but also uh, by war with the Philistines. And, and maybe he's referring to something like that in this kind of context, right? But whatever that is, David's perspective on his life and on his time is very unique. And he gives us this kind of what-if question that, that really is so, uh, it's so familiar to our kind of ruminating mind. What if, right? What if things had gone differently? <laughs> and, and so often, we kind of have this question uh, sort of around despair, negativity, regret. You know, what if I could have a do-over that situation? You know, what, what would I do differently? Or, or we kind of project into the future. What if things go badly tomorrow? What if things kind of go, I got to plan ahead, and anxiety kind of takes control this isn't that type of a what-if statement. This is a what-if about what if the Lord had not been on our side. Right? Have you ever reflected back on a situation in your life and asked that kind of question? What if things had not gone well? Right? What if we hadn't narrowly escaped? Right? What, what if things had gone worse? So last week, we went to the, the drive-in movie theater, and uh, on our way to the drive-in, I was reminded a friend of mine in grade school lived at the very top of the hill in Hamilton, and uh, I would go over to his house as, as a student, and we would turn on the radio and listen to the drive-in movies. And for films that we had seen a lot of times, it wasn't, it wasn't a problem that we couldn't actually see. And uh, I remember there was one particular night where Cool Runnings was showing at the drive-in. And uh, that's a movie that I've seen, I mean, it feels like a hundred times. And we wanted to, to listen to the, the audio of the movie, but it was stormy outside, and so we weren't getting a very good signal. And uh, I, I've always been a little bit, um, uh, I would say maybe just dangerous when it comes to my body, unconcerned, I'm jumping running, climbing on things, um, getting myself into precarious situations. And, and so I suggested, you know, hey, Alex, your room is on the second floor, and it looks out over a little uh, roof area. I'll climb out on the roof, and I'll hold the radio, and that way we'll get a better signal. He didn't think it was a great idea, but I was already out the window. And I had the radio. It was working great, and we, we could hear the movie. But it was a storm, right? And so at some point in time, uh, there was a lightning bolt that was really close to us that was like behind me, and I didn't see it. So the thunder boomed really loudly, and it, it startled me. And it kind of like jolted my whole body, and, and I lost my footing, my grip on the roof, and I started to slide down the roof. I think it was maybe in like the third or fourth grade. And um, Alex, who was inside the window, smart one, uh, kind of like just reaction hooked me, like tried to grab at me, and he hooked underneath my armpit. Um, I think it was more luck than anything else. 
I've seen that guy play sports. He's not, you know, like so. Uh, but, <laughs> but he got me. And he was able to steady me just long enough to kind of get me back in the window. Um, and, and for the kids out there, right, this is a story just for my kids with the first service. Don't go out the windows. Don't go on roofs. Uh, right? Don't do like I did. <laughs> Let's do different. Um, but as I, as I kind of reflect back on that story and on that time, it kind of fills me with that kind of question, what if? And for me, it was, it was about my friend Alex. You know, what if Alex hadn't been there to steady me? You know, and, and asking that kind of a question really fills me, honestly, with a little bit of vulnerability. That question, what if so-and-so hadn't been there to help me, uh, there are a lot of examples in my life. And most of them I don't really feel comfortable sharing in a very public kind of a way. Because it's honestly, it's vulnerable uh, to share a story like that, I think, and, and um, to reflect on it. But I'm also filled with a lot of gratitude towards, towards my friend who was there to be with me. And it kind of, even though I'm feeling that anxiety in my body retelling the story, I can feel that kind of pulsation like happening. Um, I, I, I have a great sense of, of thanks and gratitude for him. And, and I really think that's what the psalmist is trying to get at here for us uh, when it comes to our faith. What if the Lord hadn't been on our side in a particular season or, or situation in our life? And, and you see, when we frame the question that way, I think that it definitely evokes a sense of gratitude for God's presence and an appreciation for what we have, right? Because we're not looking at, at, at what we don't like about a situation, or we're not looking at how we would have done things differently. Instead, we're looking at what is so wonderful, right? What, what, what can we give thanks for in this situation, right? And so the psalmist says, if the Lord was not on our side, what would that have been like? He says, our enemies would have swallowed us alive. He said, the, the flood would have swept us away. The, the torrent would have gone over us. Over us would have gone the raging waters. It's kind of this sh shuddering thought, you know. Um, and we sort of think about it from the perspective of the disciples. Right? What if... Jesus had not been in the boat. What, what if the Lord had not been on their side? Would they have said something very similar, filled with despair, filled with fear, filled with, with loneliness? Would they have said something like, if God were not on our side, man, we would have been swept away by this storm. The raging waters would have pulled us down. We would have been swallowed alive if the Lord were not with us. And this is where I want us to kind of consider that same question. I'd love to invite you to consider that same question for a moment in your own life. What if the Lord had not been on our side? How would you finish that thought? How would you finish that sentence? You know, perhaps you would think about um, despair. You know, without the promise of the resurrection in Christ, you know, how would, how would we face death, your own death, the death of a loved one, it would be a, a hopeless situation. You know, perhaps you think about uh, a life of guilt, you know, the, the sins of your past, and you, you think, man, without the forgiveness of Christ, I would, I would just be lost, my future would be lost to guilt. You know, maybe you, you think about the isolation that so many Americans kind of report having today. And you kind of think, without the family of believers that, that God has brought me into through baptism, right, I would have no lasting community to share the, the real joys and the, the real sorrows and struggles of life with. You know, maybe you think about kind of the, the rat race just the, the everyday struggle of life, just rinsing and repeating what feels like uh, 
you know, a life of, of service. And you go, man, without the redeeming work of Christ, it just feels like nothing I do would really have a, a larger meaning. You know, I would just work day after day, and then I would die, and people would forget me. But because of what Christ has done, I, I am living forever in the, the eternal remembrance of, of my God, and, and what I'm doing today matters for the redemption and for the redeeming and the re-putting back together of this whole broken thing. It honestly is a little bit um, difficult and disturbing to consider sometimes what would it really be like if the Lord were not on our side. But maybe it's not such a terrible thing to consider from time to time. Right? Sometimes a little disturbance can help God's people find a, a renewed comfort in his promises and, and a revitalized vigor for a life of, of faithful obedience to the one who rules the wind and the waves. Uh, I love this quote. This is from uh, Glenn Clark. He's a professor and uh, an author. He writes this, For trouble, if it merely turns us to God and hence renews our strength, ceases to be evil. It becomes good. It becomes the best thing that could possibly come to us next to God himself. For our growth in power and happiness depends upon the number of seconds out of each 24 hours that we are resting in God. Seems like he's writing today. This is a man who died in 1956. Seems to be a problem. Honestly, I wonder if part of the reason our culture just seems so anxious isn't because we need to spend more time in therapy or because we need to, to find the right medication, but because we haven't spent enough time resting in God's presence. The psalmist says, our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of of heaven and earth. He is the one who delivered David from the Goliath. He is the one who calmed David's nerves when he spent years on the run from King Saul. He is the one who forgave David for his infidelity with Bathsheba and murder of her husband. He is the one who helped David work to make that situation right and keep his guilt from overcoming his future. He is the one who delivered the disciples on that boat, and he is the one who has delivered us from sin and insignificance, from death and so much more. And it's not just that we are saved by faith, but we are safe in Christ's presence. The disciples saw the storm raging around them. They weren't concerned about years in the future. They were concerned about this moment. And they woke Jesus up and they said, Jesus, don't you care that we are drowning today? But if you notice, Jesus only reluctantly used his power to calm the storm. It seemed like he was, he was much more ready to just remain asleep in, in the boat. He actually wakes up and, and, and calls them faithless for asking for this storm-calming power to be used. And, and it makes us think that the real miracle here is not that Jesus calmed the storm. Right? Because this is the same power that Jesus rejects and doesn't use when he's tempted by the devil. This is the same power that Jesus rejects and, and doesn't use when he's hanging on the cross, being taunted to just come down. I think that the, we want the story to be about Jesus' ability to control the weather. But this is a story 
about how little we actually believe that God's presence in the midst of an overwhelming storm is truly enough. It's a story about how maybe, deep down, we don't really believe that a God with us is truly enough. I don't think the miracle of this story is about Jesus calming the storm and and taking control, but the miracle of this story is that Jesus was with the disciples in the boat, experiencing the same terrible storm, the same terrible waves, the same terrible danger, and that alone should have been enough for them. God's power isn't in the control of creation or the control of people, but it's being present and in relationship with us while we go through the storms of life. So I, I want to return to that what if question as we move into a time of prayer and into a time of of communion, but I want to ask it a little bit differently. What if we went forward trusting that God really was on our side and and trusting that God really was present with us? You know, what would it look like for us to go forward without fear, without uncertainty, that God is on our side and that God loves you? I I think for me about that Romans 8 passage, if God is for us, then and who could be against us, right? That kind of confession of faith, that kind of confidence comes from God's presence being enough to calm our hearts in the midst of the storms because our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for your your constant presence and your unwavering support when we face the storms of life. Help us to remember that you are on our side, calming our fears, leading us to safety. Strengthen our faith. Fill us with confidence to trust in your promises, knowing that our help is truly in your name. May we live each day resting in your love and reflecting your peace to those around us. We pray this in your son's name. Amen.